Tremendous. Um, just thank you, Lord, I'm here. I never imagined this. And um, I'm just so thankful and blessed to have a coach like Coach Fisher who never let up on me, never gave up on me, always pushed me, never let me throw a ball bad. Everything has to be perfect. And, and you know, that's the way it is. And that's, he's a perfectionist, and he built me into a perfectionist. So my, my, my first year at Florida State has been unbelievable. Through the ups and the downs, it's just my team always stuck behind me. Coach Fisher always pushed me, and, and we just won the Orange Bowl. So I'm, I'm blessed. Now front row left side. DeMarcus, Brian Chinaki, First Coast News. Two questions. First, when you were at Sandalwood High School, did you ever think that this was possible? And then second question, Jalen Ramsey just tweeted, four and 44 are the real goats with the goat emoji. <laughs> what does that mean to you guys as somebody that had so much success in those jerseys, uh, saying something like that? Um, coming out of high school, I knew uh, this was destined because uh, I had older guys like LaMarcus Joyner, Jameis, and Darby. They took me under their wing when I first got here. Because I never took a visit, you know, during uh, recruiting here. I've been one time going to my sophomore year, but other than that, uh, you know, you, you can see what the coaches wanted from us and what the program was built on. And uh, the whole Jalen tweet, you know, being, being the greatest, you know, whatever, whatever you call it, you know, you don't speak for it, you know, you let the people speak for you. And then when you got people that speak for you, then you know it's real. Third row, far right. Yeah, Dalvin, how, can you just talk about how meaningful this game is to you, your last game in your hometown? And did, did anybody ever advise you not to play? Did you ever consider not playing in this game? You know, I still haven't made my decision yet. So, you know, I'm going to still celebrate my team for, for this night. But, you know, to be in this game, it was a childhood dream. You know, growing up, seeing previous guys playing the Orange Bowl before me was always a childhood dream. To be up here on this podium with these guys and this coach, you know, I'm just blessed to be up here, and, you know, I'm just proud to be a part of this group, man. And, you know, I'm just proud of everybody that was a part of it. Did you ever think about not playing in this Not game? one no. bit. That whistle get blown, we was going to be out there. Never. <laughs> Back of the room, right side. Dalvin, uh, Paulo Salazar with WTXL. Can you talk to me a little bit about uh, how you were able to turn it on in this game? You were, you know, just a couple yards shy from breaking a record and. uh uh, you did that tonight. How, how did you keep things going? Well, you know, it was going to be a game of patience. And, you know, we knew what type of defense we was going to face. It was one of the top defenses that we were going to face all year. And they opposed a different challenge to us, which they was big, rangy, experienced guys. So, you know, Coach Fisher did a great job of, you know, knowing when to call plays and getting me in the right predicament to make them. And when he called my number, you know, I just, I just answered the bell for him. So, you know, that was all the game plan. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Can we have a microphone in the middle of the room? Yes. Nyquan, can you talk talk us through the, the touchdown catch and the emotions that you felt once you hauled it in? I mean, uh, coach called the play, and I went out there um, with a good mindset and executed the play. And uh, without DeAndre, good throw. And without the line, I wouldn't be able to make that catch. So I just thank them guys, and uh, we won the Orange Bowl. Jimbo, I got to ask you about this. Second quarter, you had a fourth and one in your own end. I know Dalvin was getting on you to go for it. Did he talk you into it, or how did that all come about? We come here to win the game. <laughs> we're here to win the game. We're gonna play to win. We told him that we're gonna lay it all on line. We had chance. We're gonna we're gonna be aggressive in calls. We had chance to win the lane. If we didn't make an inch, we didn't deserve to win it. Now I got to follow up on that. If this was a playoff, you'd still would have gone for it then. <laughs> we're here to win the game. <laughs> <laughs> every game, every game, sits different. Left side of the room, third row. Dalvin, just with uh, with everybody with that 71-yard run, um, everybody was just looking at you in the stadium, kind of in awe. What was that feeling like? What was that like running down the sideline there? And uh, could you believe that you you stepped out of bounds there? Yeah, I actually think I didn't step out, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, it was third and 22, and it was a play Coach Fisher called that we we called all year, but you know. I just feel like I could have took advantage of that moment because, you know, I, I just felt like, you know, guys didn't think I could break out at this point in time. And, you know, I got an open field with a couple of guys and, you know, made them miss. And Robert C was made blocks downfield. And, you know, I just tried to go to distance and change the scoreboard for my team. Same side of the room, second row. Question for Dalvin Cook. Dalvin, we go back in 2009 when you played – for the Miami Garden Chargers, which was part of the Orange Bowl. Now, years later, you went undefeated. How does it feel like coming all the way back and playing on the big stage for the Orange Bowl and winning a championship? You know, you know, he asked me that question because he was my coach. 
back in 2009. He was my head coach. <laughs> yeah, that was my head coach back at the Miami Guard Chargers right there. I mean, you were uh, smart with him too, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, to be, like I said, to be sitting up here and, you know, watching those games with all those guys in the stadium, being a younger guy, a Miami, a Miami kid, you know, back at this opportunity on this podium at a bigger stage, you know, it's not, it's not more that I want than this right here, you know. Unbelievable moment, and I'm just glad to be a part of it, man. Back, back of the room. Lane Hurt, Seminoles.com. De DeMarcus, for, for this to, to cap your career at Florida State, what does this mean, the way that the season went, the way this team fought, and then to end your career as an Orange Bowl champion? Well, <clears throat> this is really not about me. Uh, it's about this team carrying this over, knowing what it takes to, you know, to win and perfection and, you know, the preparation. I'm going into every game next year. You know, I feel like uh, – that was one of our weak points of this season. And, you know, uh, hopefully they just learn from it. And what's amazing is, you know, back in 2012, they had the Orange Bowl win, and they had ups and, ball, uh, ups and downs that season. And look what they did next year. So hopefully, hopefully they just learn from this season and uh, just never make that mistake again next season. Front, front side of the room, front row. Delvin, I'm sure NFL is on your mind. Just want to get your thoughts on the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> Repeat your question again. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Jacksonville Jaguars? They, they got some of you know, the, the greatest that ever played in our program on their team. You know, Jalen, Telvin, um, Rashad. You know, some, some of the greatest that ever been at this program, you know. So, you know, I commend those guys for making plays at that, at that team. You know, I think it's a great organization. And, you know, I, they gotta, they go, they're going to regroup and, you know, get some more guys in the draft to help they, to help their team. Left side of the room, back. DeAndre, can you just talk about now with so many guys coming back, you lose some some great players, but you have a lot to look forward to. What what, what are your expectations? You know, what are you looking forward to next year? Um, <clears throat> our expectations are high. Uh, just like at the beginning of this season, they were high, and uh, we continue to be high. Um, the seniors and guys that we're, we're losing, you know, it's unfortunate, but that's the way the game goes. But we have a lot of young talent coming back and this off season is be, is, will be very important through fourth quarter, spring ball, summer, everything will be very crucial and we're just going to focus on details and continue to get better. Back of the room, camera stage. Uh, DeAndre, can you talk about just the offensive line and the offensive performance that you guys had, the journey that you guys had as far as starting the season off and how you guys ended the season, when you guys learned as far as what you guys gained as far as the offensive unit, especially the offensive line? Um, O-line did a tremendous job uh, throughout the season. They, they've grown up, um, you know, a lot of guys switching positions, getting in and out. And, you know, thanks to Coach Trickett for just always staying on top of them, always coaching them hard along with Coach Fisher. And, you know, <clears throat> I always believed in those five guys. Whoever they put out there, I always believed in them, and they always believed in me. And just as an offense, we've just grown up tremendously. We've uh, learned how to play and focus on details, learn how to finish drives, and just all the little things that Coach Fisher harp on in practice, we try to bring those things to the field, and I feel like we, we've done that. Right side of the room, second row. Yeah, this question is for uh, DeAndre and Jimbo. Um, what does it say about a guy like Nooney to go up and make that play in a spot like that against a cornerback like that? Either one. Either one. Well, you Florida State, man. That, that's that's my little brother right there. I knew Nooney since we was eight, and for him to do that, he's been doing that all his life. Big players make big time plays and big time moments, and that was a big time moment right there. And as soon as that ball left my hand, I knew he was gonna come down with it. I just knew in my heart he was gonna come down with it, and that's just God God blessing him with the ability to go up and make that catch. And Coach Fisher making a great call in that situation, and we just executing it. But we knew, I said this before, you've heard me say it. He can do and be anything he wants to be. Sometimes I love him. Sometimes I want to choke him. <laughs> same. I do. But at the same time, I, uh -huh, I, I do love. But truly understanding how to be detail-oriented. Because a receiver has to be so precise without the ball to allow the ball to get there. And as he's learning that, he can be a difference maker for this football team. I mean, because there's not a route he can't run, there's not a catch he can't make, and there's not a thing he can't do. And as he keeps growing, he's going to be a huge part of this team. It will make this team a different team 
if he continues to grow and do the things he's capable of doing. Let's do two more questions. Second row on the left. Coach Jim, there was a lot of comparisons when DeAndre first got on campus to Jameis. Mm -hmm. And would he be able to fill those shoes? What similarities does he have, but also what does he have that's totally different that you feel he takes advantage of defenses? You know, <clears throat> I never like to compare players because I think it's truly unfair. It's like comparing your kids. You know what I mean? You can't, they're all different in their own ways, what makes them great. But his uniqueness and his drive and his determination, he had, his arm talent's through the roof. His competitiveness. And, and I'm going to tell you what, you talk about everybody's got arm talent. We're in a combine world, okay? We're in a combine world. We want everybody to run, jump, throw, and do all these tests. Well, I'm going to tell you what, when you put pads on, you get hit right in the mouth. All that combine stuff goes out the window. Preach. Then you find out who's a football player. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The guy's a football player. And what I mean by that, the, the toughness, the competitiveness, the mental toughness, the grinding, physically, mentally, to keep under, and understanding how to win. There's a difference in playing well and even winning. All right, what's his numbers today? 9 of 27? Everybody said, well, that's a bet. No, it ain't. The throws he made, the moments he made them, when he made them, how he made them, that's championship football. You know what I'm saying? That's why numbers don't tell the story of the kind of players they are. And what he has is true competitiveness, true heart, true, and true toughness. And it reflects, because let me tell you what, you can throw a ball all you want. The object is to get the guys on the team to follow him and want to play for you. That's what a quarterback is. That's what he is. And Jameis has those same qualities, but they do it differently. Different personalities. You know, Jameis was louder, more, more vocal. He's not. But at times he does with them. He is with them, usually not with me. I mean, just he's a quieter demeanor with me. And each guy has to be his own, his own guy. You can't, like I say, each team has its own personality like a child. Each quarterback has to do it in his own way, and he has his own way. But he, they all have those certain characteristics of toughness, competitiveness, and affect the guys on the team in a positive way no matter what's going on. And the guys believe in them. One more question. We'll go to the front right here. Coach Fisher, Coach Fisher, earlier some of your comments about Dalvin were phrased in the past tense. Do you expect him to be here next year? And also, what do you think would be in his best interest? I don't know that. We'll get the information and let him make a choice and we'll just enjoy the Orange Bowl. But, you know, that's a decision. Well, our job is to get the proper information for him to make the proper choice and support him in anything he does in the way he does, just like we'll always do. He's always part of this family. He'll never be, not be a part of this family. We want the best for him. But I know one thing. If we get him, we'll be the luckiest team in the world. Whoever drafts him will be the luckiest team in the world. So somebody's going to be happy. 